OK, next to a huge match at the bottom of the table, victory for Hamilton Ackies would not only preserve their top flight status, it would consign their opponents, Kilmarnock, to at least the playoff place. Watching for us at New Douglas Park was John Barnes. The Hamilton manager, Martin Canning, sticks by the same starting lineup that beat Dundee United last week. That means Carlton Morris, who scored twice at Tannadice, again leads the attack. Goalkeeper Connor Brennan makes his first start of the season for Kilmarnock in place of the suspended Jamie McDonald. Craig Slater and Josh McGuinness return after illness and injury. Here's Slater. He's done well on the flanks here. The midfielder has come off the head of McKinnon and there's Kilty. Well, what an early opportunity for Kilmarnock. Almost an own goal there from Darian McKinnon and Michael McGovern to the rescue. Hodson. McKenzie. Trying to get away from Gordon and McKinnon. He has done so. Here's Kilty. That's the opener. Greg Kilty in the 11th minute puts Komarnik in front. Although Ackies are claiming the ball was over the goal line there and it should have been a goal kick. But Kilty wasn't hanging around. McKenzie was a man along the byline. It may just have been at this moment. Was it over? The officials say no. And Kilty found the top corner. Hodson. Losing out to Gillespie. And there's Morris. Well, that was a chance for the equaliser there for Carlton Morris. He caused problems for Dundee United last week. Crawford's free kick. There's Gordon. Trying to get a connection at the back post. Ziggy Gordon. Good delivery from Crawford. Dicker. Hodson. Hodson here again with Kilty. Now Boy through to Kilty. That's number two. It's a double for Greg Kilty. The teenager there making a good run, getting onto the pass created by Chris Boyd. And that's Kilty's sixth goal of the season. Slater. There's Gary Dicker. Not a bad effort there from the Kilmarnock midfielder. Kelly looking to maintain this good run. They're unbeaten in their last five visits to New Douglas Park. Morris. Now it's Emery. Trying to get in behind. Can they pull a goal back before the interval? Here's Ali Crawford. And Connor Brennan there to make the save. That's about the first time in this first half that they've really tested the Kilmarnock goalkeeper. Slater is looking for McGuinness. There's Taglapietra. He seemed to use a hand there. And the uh, officials agree. And Kilmarnock have a penalty. Chris Boyd has already scored twice on the spot this season. Make that three times now. McGovern went right, Boyd placed it the other side and Kilmarnock 3-0 to the good. Dicker. Here's Kilty. He's been impressive all afternoon. There's a good ball in, there's McGuinness! Number four, it won't count, the flag is up. Offside against Josh McGuinness. Hamilton's home form has been their Achilles heel this season. Only one win in their last 13 at New Douglas Park. Here's Danny Redmond. That's a good delivery. Here's Kurtai in behind the Killy defence. But he's hit the side netting. And that was a real opportunity to get Aki's back into this game. He could have cut it back as well. Morris was through the middle. McKenzie. Support arise from Hodson. It's a neat pass inside the full back. Guilty. Trying to cut it. Back looking for McGuinness. And it's gone in. 
and Kilmarnock are 4-0 in front. It looked like an own goal. It may well have come off Danny Redmond and knocked it beyond Michael McGovern. And Kilmarnock's chances of avoiding the playoff spot receiving a huge boost. I think when you look at it, our players knew the importance of the game, they were up for the game and I think when you see it right from the start, I think we take a throw in in the first minute, we lose the ball, they put it into the box and Michael has to make a fantastic save and it sets the tone for the game. And yeah, the, the first goal is always going to be important and we, we kind of weathered that wee bit, we got sailed back into the game and then obviously we concede for a, a goal that shouldn't stand. We're not getting excited, I would love to still be in Hamilton's position, they're four points ahead of us, but we know if we can look after our results now, from now to the end of the season, gives ourselves a fighting chance to uh, not be involved in the playoffs. No doubt about the huge moment in this match. Did that ball go out of play, Michael? I thought it did. What do you think? I think after uh, many replays of this clip, Jonathan, I've come to the conclusion that yes, it did, but very, very difficult to tell. We're, uh, we're going to try and slow-mo the slow-mo <laughs> and uh, get a zoom in here as well to, to, to get a, as close a look as possible as to whether this did, in fact, cross the line. So tight. It is so tight. I think there you can see that the ball has crossed the line. It's a very, very difficult one for the lineswoman to, to, to get right. She's on the far side of the park. She's looking through a lot of bodies, a set of posts as well. So you can understand why that hasn't been called right, because it happens in a split second as well. It's a tough one for you know, Hamilton to take, but what they can't afford to do is just stop. You, you, know, you get taught that from an early age as a kid. Here's Ziggy Gordon, who is further away, He's the one that ends up getting back and closing Kilty down. Sure. Whereas Darren McKinnon stops. He can't do that. And they pay the ultimate price for it by going 1-0 down. It was a great start from Kilmarnock in this match. But there was a hint of controversy about the second goal as well, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. But uh, unlike the first one where I think Hamilton have got you know, a slight grievance, this one, uh, I think we'll show quite clearly, wasn't offside. But the build-up play to this was really good from Kilmarnock and I think it, it showed the, the improvement in their performance. You know, they kept the clean sheet, they scored four goals, but the, in the final third they were really clinical. Good interchange, good movement. A lot of people offering themselves and not you know, standing still and static. A fantastic run from Chris Boyd as well. But this bit here, when we just pause it, this is the bit where there was the possibility of an offside. But to be honest, I think when you see here, Karakin's the left back, mm -hmm. quite clearly he's playing Kilty on side. So there, there isn't any real issue for Hamilton on this one. It was just a really good bit of play from uh, Kilmarnock and a thoroughly deserved uh, second goal that really cemented them in the driving position. Absolutely, it was a hugely impressive performance overall from Kilmarnock, Michael. I was there yesterday. For you, what made the difference? Well. I think, you know, the big thing, and I spoke about this last week for uh, Kirk Kilmarnock, is that it was a toxic combination. They've let in, you know, far too many goals and they've not scored enough. But, you know, they scored four yesterday and they kept a clean sheet. And there's a reason for that. You see, this is right from the second uh, goal from the kickoff. Bang, closing down. McGuinness then closing the, the left back down. Chris Boyd in between the two centre halves, marshalling the team as to where the ball's going to go. Pushing Hamilton to places they want to go. And then I'm just going to pause it here as well. The first time there's a penetrative pass that breaks through the Kilmarnock lines. And Gary Dicker, he was in there all day long, never far away, closing them down so that once the ball had gone in there, forcing them back out, they have to go back. And once it goes back, the whole team pushing up. And this just typified the performance from Kilmarnock yesterday, a real team work ethic that uh, was the reason behind them uh, winning 4-0. Absolutely. So Hamilton and Kilmarnock still in the playoff mix. Two other sides still not completely out of the playoff equation met in Glasgow yesterday. Inverness Cali Thistle, the visitors at Partick Thistle.